To be honest, I had always suspected that those claims by Plate were bogus to begin with. Why? Because as pointed out in Exhibit D, when ESA's Smart-1 probe scanned the lunar surface where the Soviet sample return missions had landed, the scan showed that the rocks were in agreement to those the Russians had retrieved, at least in terms of calcium content. But when Smart-1 crashed into the lunar maria and kicked up rocks and dust for the scientists to analyse with ground-based telescopes, they found that the rock material was mineralogically different to the Apollo samples. By punching a 10 metre hole in the moon's surface, the probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. The key is the chemical signatures in the dust and debris thrown up by the collision. And also the radiation in the infrared can tell us the temperature, which tells us how much energy was released and what the material must be made of. Now, that is not to say that I'm still not sceptical about the Soviet samples as we have seen five lunar meteorites that do not match up to any basalt from either Apollo or Luna. I don't know if these Russian samples were genuinely retrieved by robots, but it is clearly evident that the Soviet samples are not the same as their American counterparts as some propagandists have insisted. And even if they were, using Webb's logic and standards, I guess we can just dismiss them. After all, as Webb said, whether the Soviets gathered their own lunar samples or somehow concocted their samples from what NASA supposedly gave them, it would have no bearing at all on whether the Apollo moon rocks are real or not. So the next time Phil Plate comes up to you and waves his arms hyping about the Russian samples and citing them for his claims, you can tell him it's irrelevant. That's what Webb said. Now, Webb did discuss Smart One in his series too. But before we get into that, and seeing as we are on the subject of scanning the lunar surface, I may as well respond to the last bit that Webb brings up in his video on the Russian samples. But what's fascinating about the analysis done in the early 70s is if you plot Randy's average titanium oxide weight percentages of the Apollo and Luna samples against the Clementine 415 nanometer to 750 nanometer ratio reflectance values, you get a remarkable correlation. Question. How did NASA know how much titanium oxide to put in their fake moon samples back in the 70s to correlate with future analysis that would use remote filtered images from Clementine's UV Viz camera in 1994 combined with radiometric techniques developed after 1995? Technologies that hadn't even been dreamed of in the 70s. Your ignorance of space history is becoming more and more obvious. Need I remind you that prior to the Apollo landings, NASA launched surveyors 5, 6 and 7 to specifically measure the elemental percentages of lunar rocks. You'd think that if Webb spent as long as he did explaining how the micrometeoroid impact experiments were conducted on the lunar orbiter spacecraft, he'd have known about their brothers that actually landed. Although only Surveyor 5 landed close to the Apollo 11 site, the titanium in Apollo 12, 14 and 16 rocks can be fairly closely matched to that of the low titanium and titanium free rocks that were analysed by Surveyors 6 and 7. So if NASA did use the Surveyor data as a reference, it was clearly a lucky educated guess. This is of course assuming the Surveyor data is for real. After all, the surveyors were NASA probes. So was the Clementine for that matter. I'm sure NASA's probes can tell you what NASA wants them to tell you. In this case, substituting the real lunar data with numbers that are more consistent with that of the Apollo samples. Sorry to sound like a broken record, but here again, we have the fox guarding the hen house. How many more NASA missions do you plan on passing off as independent verification when you know full well that they are not? I'm not quite done with the Clementine yet, but we'll discuss that in the next episode, which just so happens to touch on my favourite subject, the Smart One. <laughs>